Hello and welcome to the show. There are some entertainers who just stand out. Cultural giants, if you would, and Bill Duke is certainly one of those giants, literally and figuratively. It is my honor to have the legendary actor, director, writer, and humanitarian, the legendary Bill Duke, here I'm Portia. Thank you so much, sir. Portia, thank you so much for having me. It is an honor to have you here. Your story um, begins, it, it's, it's a troubled story, but a beautiful story of a child who uh, is trying to find his way mm -hmm. um, through a time of racism in America, a time of poverty for black people in America, with this talented boy who has so many gifts. You, you're, it's just incredible the things that you have been through and how you got here. Yes, you know, I was fortunate to grow up with great parents. Yeah. And they would not allow you to have excuses. Right. You had to keep going. Yeah. So the thing is, is that with those kinds of parents, it's really, really important because they give you a certain inspiration and a certain value system. Yeah, and even with um, some of the trauma that you saw it, it, in family, outside of family, the parenting never stopped. The expectations that you were going to be great never ceased. Right, well, you know, you're given certain values by them. Yeah. And um, they didn't allow you to say, oh, the, woe is me. Right. If you say, well, this giant has his foot on my neck and my neck is cracking, they say, well, at least you can bite his toe. Uh, good point, <laughs> good point of view, good point of view, some invaluable lessons. Yes. Um, let's talk about how you ended up, I mean, you were born in Poughkeepsie, New York, yes. right? And you wanted to be a, a, a writer? You, you, weren't, you, you didn't have your heart set on acting initially. No, not at all. Um, I uh, wanted to write and also I had some pre-med things. I was going to be a doctor, and when they had me cutting up cats and dogs. Right, because I remember in your book you talk yes. about, I mean, you were dissecting animals <laughs> yes, in your room, yes. grossing out your sister. That's it's right. a very good book. You've got to go <laughs> read it. Um, but what changed? What happened? Uh, I was in a play in junior college called mm -hmm. The Emperor Jones. Yes. Because it was part of a writing class. Mm -hmm. And somehow playing that part, um, Something bit me. I never thought about it even, but I knew that it's something I maybe wanted to do. Yeah. Is that the one where you got your first standing ovation and you were like, I, what, yes. what's happening? Exactly. That right. feeling. You never, ever forgot that, did never you? Never forgot that. You know, the approval, the appreciation, and people appreciating who you were and what you did, that was amazing. Especially at a time when... Um, Let's be honest now, a brown-skinned, tall black man wasn't necessarily appreciated on stage in that, sometimes still in this arena, but especially decades ago, right? And we were considered threatening. Mm. I mean, you know, it was like, you know, if you're tall and black, you had to be angry or aggressive or dangerous. And it was a time of segregation, too. Right. So. And I remember in your book you talked about trying to sort of... Uh, small down a little bit and seem like, okay, no, I'm not threatening. And then that became bothersome and you became angry having to not play up to these stereotypes when you were a talented and brilliant man. Even throughout your career, sometimes people would not know, oh, this is the director showing up. You were mistaken once for the delivery man. Well, that, when I first did a Knots Landing and I, my first, you know, real TV show. And, right. Um, I drove to the security guard in my car and, and rolled down the window. And he stuck his head in and said, um, who are you delivering for? Mm. I said, what did you say? He said, who are you delivering for? And I wanted to say, I'm about to deliver a can of that to you. in the can? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but instead I said, no, I'm the first black director. Open the gate. Mm -hmm. And the most rewarding thing was the look on his face. Mm, yes, yes, indeed. I know so many other rewards have come, though, with some of the uh, people that you had a chance to teach along yes. the way throughout mm -hmm. the course of your mm -hmm. career and inspire, right? I think some of them were inspired, you know, and um, because, you know, I was always taught to give back, mm -hmm. you know, not just to keep to yourself, but when you look at the industry and you see how just the ratio of number of us are working at all, yeah. or get an opportunity. I think we have an obligation if we do become successful 
to give back. Yeah. And so many people that you have worked with, um, we're looking, our viewers are looking with, at some of the actors you've worked with and inspired. I won't ask you your favorite, but there's definitely a difference between being on camera and behind the camera and having an impact in a different way. Which for you still resonates more? Being behind the camera. Mm -hmm. Because Why? It, it, whatever vision you have, it can be manifested. As an actor, you know, you're under the director, I mean, etc. But as a director, you collaborate with the writer. Yeah. And whatever is on that screen is a collaboration. Yeah. And part of your voice is in it. Yeah. And the narrative is so important. Being able to really um, influence the outcome yes. is really so important. And I know that that's what you spend a lot of time talking to people in the industry about, mm -hmm. you know, making it make a difference on camera, but really changing the narrative behind the scenes, right? I think it's very important to have our voices spoken by us. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying others can't speak our voice, but the depth and the experience of our lives comes through our voice. Yeah. Yeah. Does this, I, this industry has changed so much, um, but are you, are you pleased with what you see or are you frustrated with where things have gone? I'm pleased because there's more involvement, but I'm also frustrated by the ratio in terms of the percentage of us that work compared to others many times. And our voices need to be heard more, particularly now and this time of great division, we should be having all voices spoken. Right, right. Does that yeah. make any sense? It does, it does. But listen, I know um, we've got a clip. I want to take a look at a clip of when you uh, received an award and there was family around you. You know what I'm talking yes, about. Let's yes. talk about this just for a moment after we take a look. Okay. Actor, director, and producer Bill Duke. <laughs> The look on your face, I have never seen you look shocked, acting or in in your natural, you know, state. Yes. Why was that award, so many accolades, so many awards and accomplishments, why was that one so touching? Well, you know, it's legacy. You know, long after I'm gone, that star is going to still be there, and it speaks of not only me, but my family and all that I've been given and done, so it was... Yeah, it was, I was huge. Unexpected. And somebody in your family's got amazing breath control. I mean, can hold a note clearly. I love it. <laughs> Listen, we're going to continue this conversation because we know family is so important to you. We're going to continue this conversation with the legendary Bill Duke right after the break. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I really want to thank you for season three of Portia. It's because of loyal viewers like you that we keep getting to share this daily dose of positivity all across the country. So just a reminder, I still need you to like, comment, and subscribe, and go ahead and tell your friends. You can catch us now in Orlando, in San Francisco, in Atlanta, and all across the country on Fox Soul. Tell your friends. We'll see you soon on Portia.